I'm a big fan of really well done album artwork. I thought it would be fun to pick four iconic album cover locations and see what they look like now, decades later, using Google Maps and Google Street View. We're hitting up titles from Led Zeppelin, Rush, Beastie Boys, Black Sabbath, coming up next. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. First up, Led Zeppelin's 1975 album, Physical Graffiti. The cover art features a doctored photo of two side-by-side -side buildings located at number 96 and number 98, St. Mark's Place in New York's East Village. The street has been described by some as the coolest street in America. On the original LP version of Physical Graffiti, the windows are die cut so you can see the the tenants inside, including Lee Harvey Oswald, Neil Armstrong, Elizabeth Taylor, King Kong, Judy Garland, and more. Here's the original album, and here are the original inner sleeves. By swapping out the inner sleeves and changing them around, you can change who you see in the windows. It's pretty brilliant, actually. Let's see what these buildings look like today. And as we're getting there, a quick side note, Physical Graffiti's cover was designed by Peter Corenston, who also did a bunch of album covers for the Rolling Stones, including Some Girls, Emotional Rescue, and Tattoo You. As you can see, the Physical Graffiti buildings look remarkably unchanged, with one major exception. On the album cover, the buildings are four stories, in real life, they are five. The fourth story was cropped out on the album cover, allowing the image to better fit a square space. The album's title, by the way, was reportedly inspired by a second-hand clothing store called Physical Graffiti, which was located in the basement of 96 St. Mark's Place. Today, you can see a cafe at 96 called Physical Graffiti, an obvious nod to the building's history. These buildings also appear in the music video for the Rolling Stones Waiting on a Friend. In that video, you can see Mick and Keith sitting on the front steps of 96 St. Mark's Place, the building on the right. Sticking to New York City, let's take a closer look at the cover of the Beastie Boys 1989 album, Paul's Boutique. Produced by the Dust Brothers, Paul's Boutique was the Beastie Boys' second album. It was initially considered a commercial failure, but has since become regarded as a landmark album in hip-hop. The album art features a shot of the fictional Paul's Boutique, alongside a place called Lee's Sportswear. While Paul's Boutique Boutique was fake, Lee's Sportswear was very much a real place. The building that housed Lee's Sportswear is located at the corner of Ludlow Street and Rivington Street in Manhattan's Lower East Side. Today, the intersection bears little resemblance to the iconic album cover. Lee's Sportswear, well, that's long gone, replaced by a place called Wolf Nights, which is a gourmet sandwich shop. The intersection's music history would likely go unnoticed by many if it wasn't for one major detail. On the side of the building, is a giant Beastie Boys mural painted in 2014 to commemorate Paul's Boutique. Next, let's head over to Toronto, Canada and check out the setting for the cover of Rush's iconic album, Moving Pictures. Released in 1981, Moving Pictures was Rush's sixth studio album and one of their best-selling records. It went to number one in Canada and number three in the US and in the UK. Moving Pictures features staples like Limelight, Tom Sawyer and the instrumental YYZ. YYZ is, of course, the airport identification code for Toronto's Lester Pearson International Airport. It should come as no surprise then that the cover for the album was shot right there in Toronto. The picture is not of a museum or an art gallery, but rather the front steps to the Ontario Legislative Building. It pretty much looks the same today as it did 40 years ago when this album came out. The cover concept was developed by art director Hugh Simey and was a play on the album's title, Moving Pictures. The shot literally depicts workers physically moving pictures and a group of people being moved to tears by these pictures. The paintings include dogs playing poker, the Starman character from 2112, and a burning Joan of Arc. Note also that there are three arches and three pillars outside the building, an unintentional homage to the three members of Rush, 
Getty, Alex, and Neil. Next, we're talking about Black Sabbath's 1970 self-titled debut album. This is one of my favorite album covers of all time, and definitely one of the creepiest. The Sabbath debut is considered by many to have been the birth of heavy metal. Amazingly, the whole record was reportedly recorded over a span of just 12 hours. The album opens with a crack of thunder and the song Black Sabbath, a tale of a man encountering the devil himself. The song's dark atmosphere, both lyrically and musically, aligns perfectly with the understated, dark, and creepy album artwork. The cover depicts a figure in a black cloak standing in front of the Maple Durham Water Mill in Oxfordshire, England. No explanation is given for why the figure is there or what it's doing. It's all really rather ominous. I was hoping to take a look at the mill on Google Street View, but it wasn't available, so we are gonna check it out on Google Earth, which actually provides a really unique bird's eye view of this interesting place. By the way, when I was a kid, I thought the figure on the album cover was Ozzy Osbourne, but it's actually model Louisa Livingstone. And while the image on the album cover may look terrifying, in reality, as you can see here, the Maple Durham water mill is not really that dark, creepy, or foreboding. The grounds actually appear quite nice, picturesque, and manicured. In fact, the 15th century mill, once used to grind flour, is now a heritage site and a tourist attraction open to the public on weekends and holidays. Nowadays, the mill houses a mini hydroelectric power station, which uses a 12-foot turbine to generate electricity. If you look at this image, you can see the mill in the middle. I've added a stick figure in front of the structure in the approximate location where model Louisa Livingstone would have stood. Still, I think it's pretty interesting to see this all in context. You gotta admire how photographer Keith McMillan took this historic park and made it into something terrifying. That is our look at the locations behind four iconic album covers. If you want to see more videos like this, please leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, dear 33 ers I hope you have a great week. Until next time, keep on spinning.